So, recording. <laughs> yeah, put my glove back on. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I think I'll post this on YouTube, maybe. Yeah, what the hell. Update video. Um, yeah, I made some pretty good videos. Six of them, I think. Uh, should point to them. <laughs> but I can't, because I'm not there to point to them. Anyway, just dickhead videos, mostly. Now, uh, did one to some English guy. Pretty funny, really. It's actually, that was a pretty funny video. And then some dorky guy. It's actually titled The Dorky Guy. Uh, that was pretty funny also, but not as funny as The English Guy, which was funnier. Um, some other kind of response video to some kid about the snake. And a little comment in there just about this idea of, <laughs> you know, whatever, these people complaining about the cult again are harming depressed people, are manipulating depressed people. I mean, I really should talk about that a little. I want to just get to that. I want to get to the democracy subject, so let me do that first. Because I'm going to post this one on YouTube, so I might as well get to that first. Um, because I'm doing it because I want to solicit comments. Um, comments in the, the idea will be something me and Adam had talked about, um, of rewriting a constitution. Coming up with really good language for a constitution. You know, first a little mechanism for voting rights and distribution of those rights, and then some mechanism for, you know, that defines where the law can trespass, you know, and what kind of uh, consensus it needs to acquire to pass certain kind of laws or abridge certain kind of liberties, um, these kind of principles, and what kind of liberties fall into those different categories of protection. Uh, and whether there's some simple way to do that, you know, some more literate way, in the sense that uh, the Constitution's language is a little bit vague. And so maybe keep it nice and concise and short, but make it sweeter in terms of its explicitity. <laughs> yes, make it more explicit, more better than, you know, respecting an establishment of religion, whatever the hell that means. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's an, an establishment? Hmm, it's not the establishment, no, it's an an establishment. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, that whole militia thing, and you know, lots of bad crap in there. Uh, and I think certain rights should be more important than other stupid rights. But anyway, uh, so if you have any stuff to comment, useful, in uh, my construction... I would appreciate it. Likely I will get nothing useful, but that's fine. Oh, on this subject, you know, I will link to... Somebody reposted my response video to... Uh, oh, I had a good name for him. Uh, L something. <laughs> yeah, L butt plug? No, Senor butt plug. Yeah, that's all I'll call him now. He looks like a Senor butt plug. You know, I uh, dickheaded him with a cigar. It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, I did a response video to him, you know, Matt's friend, uh, and, uh, you know, and the whole cigarette tax thing, and there's so many principles involved here, and people just don't give a shit about principles, and this is really politically important, because the two-party system is basically made up of, uh, special interests, um, you know, the two, the, the rich people and the religious nuts get together on one side, and the loafers and the union fucks get together on the other side, and those are the two, the groups of special interests that are running our politics. And yeah, we really got to get out of that. But the truth is that like situated minorities must fight together. If they don't, they will have no rights. Uh, There's as good a constitution as you can write. It could be unwritten by these evil courts and by manipulative law. And that's just the truth. And if these like-situated individuals um, don't cling together and fight together, they will have nothing together. Uh, I mean, a big part of the civil rights movement was the fact that a lot of people feeling abused or vulnerable in society marched in defense of those rights. Uh, Jews were a big part of fighting for the rights of blacks. And it was that coalition that made it happen. 
Uh, and if people can't see that and understand that, that when they're seeing some other minority getting fucked, even if they don't like them, if they don't come to their defense, there'll be nobody to come to their defense. And I hate that I'm becoming very hostile <laughs> because I see people in minority positions, like atheists, who are so unsympathetic uh, to minority standing individuals that uh, you're saying, what hope is there? I mean, if they don't get uh, this concept, this principle, then we really don't have anything to fight for. But anyway, that's another side issue. But, you know, damn important. Uh, yeah, so I'll do something on these subjects. What the hell? Man, this path is impossible. I'm distracted by noise over there. Um, <laughs> so what did I want to get to? Uh, yeah, I had a plan, right? Uh, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the democracy thing, but there's something else. Uh, yeah, I, I, just this whole idea of civics, this whole idea of representative power, um, you know, what happened, what's gone wrong in the system we have, and what you need in a system that's going to be useful and functional, uh, has any value. Oh, that's weird. I'm digging awful close to the stream, which is kind of fucked up and illegal. Yeah. I don't know what they're digging for. You can't be putting no swimming pool there, buddy. It's too close to the water. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that's about. No way the floodwaters went up there. I, I don't know. That's what they're making. It looks like they're putting up a levee. I mean, this stream does get kind of ferocious. But I don't think it's ever gotten ferocious enough to go up that bank. But whatever. People can do what they want, apparently, except for me. <laughs> yeah, because I don't have enough money to do what I want anymore, because I've been taxed out of my liberty. Um, so yeah, this whole, the idea that people just don't get this idea that using a tax to confine liberty is wrong on so many levels, but they should at least be able to get the simplest level, which is... It now makes liberty a commodity of privilege. <laughs> you know, if you don't have the balls to outlaw it and persecute people evenly, uh, then it just becomes a way the hierarchy wins. The rich have uh, an America to live in, and the poor do not. And if you can't see how fundamentally evil that is, <laughs> you know, I don't know what I can say to you. And uh, apparently you can't see that. A whole big pile of you smart atheists aren't capable of understanding a simple concept that if you allow the tax code to be a weapon against unfavorable beliefs or activities, and we're talking about unfavorable, we're not talking about uh, drunk driving. <laughs> you know, we're talking about what people choose to do to themselves uh, and things that are basically none of your business, unless they make it your business. Like I said, you want to legislate that people can't smoke in public places? You have a right. I think it's a little obnoxious when you go so far as to say private businesses can't even create their own smoking facilities. But whatever. Be excessive and insane. Uh, well, really, you shouldn't be excessive and insane. That's the whole point, right? is there's a principle here. Fuck! <sighs> you know, really, nobody, nobody's, nobody sees it. Nobody sees that you have to fight for the principles. You can't fight for individuals or for circumstantial circumstances or some other crap. Huh, you have to fight for principles. <sighs> They're the only things that are enduring. They are the thing that creates something solid, something that won't be eroded uh, by, uh, you know, laziness and neglect. Solid principles last. All right.
Oh, enough of that. Uh, where am I going with this? Well, it has to do with this, you know, it's part of to another one, this, this other issue that's been sort of brought up by, partially by Laura Lael Evan. This Thunderfoot is apparently going to put up some money to buy some anti-religion propaganda, you know, to have the atheist community, you know, whatever, Photoshop, <laughs> you know, religion, uh, you know, make, uh, you know, whatever, slander videos and mockery videos, and, uh, I'm not against it. I'm not against playing the propaganda game, uh, because apparently that works with people. Uh, I don't know if it really... Well, it's hard to say. I was never religious, so I can't say whether that would persuade me, uh, you know, to see, you know, dancing Jesuses. Um, but regardless, the point is he's putting up some dough, which is good, you know, his donation money. Uh people, <laughs> you know, just, yeah, you get some more money to give atheists, atheist. anyway, um, so, yeah, I guess I can't, you know, I'd like to, you know, if I could fart in Thunderfoot's direction, I'd like to, but if he actually does do this thing, well, that's a good thing, but the bad thing is, is how will it be judged, how will he distribute the reward, you know, how do you come up with a, a way to, uh, you know, do that fairly in a contest that's so, um, you know, uh, artistic, um, uh, not explicitly defined, subjectively interpretable aesthetic, you know, how do you do this judging of the aesthetics, uh, you know, what kind of, uh, process do you put together to do that? Like a court system, like any other kind of system, you want a fair game, a fair contest, a fair battle. And, uh, you know, how do you do that? And I think, obviously, you have to do it through some sort of construction of a, a hierarchy, like a Nobel Prize or the Oscars or whatever. Uh, and then you end up with this, you know, the fault in that is there's no integrity in who gets into the hierarchy, who gets into the, who gets the votes, and uh, certainly no uh, rules about how they apply their vote, and so then you just get nonsense votes, uh, completely political votes, popularity votes, the same corruptions that would happen for a direct democracy end up happening in a representative democracy if there isn't some mechanism to stop, you know, grotesquely <laughs> stupid things from happening, um, some mechanism that restrains the hierarchy, restrains the, the, the editors, the voters, the deciders, those responsible have to have accountability for what they do can't be done in the back room. You can't do it in secret and private. There's got to be some mechanism where people have to defend what they do. He's going to give Obama a peace prize before he's even been president for more than a day or two. Uh, he's got to come up with some fucking rational reason besides, well, he almost wrote a few literal sentences, literate sentences in a book once. And that's sort of bullshit. He has an idea to, you know, kill more people in Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan instead of Iraq. Therefore, he's a peaceful man. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't want to get into that political issue. But Jesus fucking Christ. Talk about unaccountable nonsense. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I could, I could see where... I wouldn't have too much enthusiasm to invest much time in a, uh, a video that's going to be judged by a Thunderfoot-approved panel of judges. Yeah, that doesn't sound too good. Yeah, sounds like they would just go with, you know, heat hall, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever, SpongeBob. Uh, you know, flat pants kind of uh, bullshit. 
So anyway, so I didn't really get to the core of that issue. How do you fix that? You know, saying the word accountability doesn't mean much until you can actually articulate the construction of that accountability. And I'm trying to work on that for my Logodome website. Because I want to have some sort of uh, accountable editorial, uh, uh, whatever you call it, hierarchy, uh, no, uh, rating, rating, ranking, some sort of, some sort of ranking of content, of argument quality, that's uh, highly accountable, uh, a peer review system that, that has real integrity, not this, the fake integrity of the ivory tower. Because even peer review has become that now, right? I mean, the, the, the peer review periodicals have now become uh, nepotistic, inbred, uh, friend network uh, constructions uh, where people of like mind uh, control. Uh, and there is no, you know, there's no obligation to democratize or um, force in uh, dissenting um, standards or opinions or thought or even credentials. And, you know, without that, it's back to the old argument that if judges have to be lawyers, then judges will automatically be liars because <laughs> lawyers are liars. Uh, lawyers can't make money if they don't know how to lie. They don't know how to twist and pervert the truth. And why would you make somebody who's a professional truth perverter into a truth judger? That doesn't sound like a good idea at all. So anyway. Yeah, so enough of the video comments, please. But like I said, no hope. <laughs> it really is no hope. Commenters are dumber than those wood chips, generally speaking. Whoa, a little bit of an add-on, I think. Oh. <laughs> I do these gloves today. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the Fred thing, and, uh, you know, it sort of relates to all of this stuff, like, you know, where were the big-name atheists? Where were the Thunderfoots and the amazing atheists? Why didn't they show up, uh, you know, to, to say something? Just say something you know, about YouTube policy, even. You know, the fact that some nothing individual on YouTube can really get into somebody's personal space in, a, in kind of a, just a nasty and invasive way. And uh, they don't get any strikes for that. <laughs> you know, their account isn't degraded. Uh, but if you make an art video, yep. You know, you know and especially... You know, in the context where there's so much content that is so, you know, that is just given a free ride. And uh, the double standard is just so pervasive. And no one does anything to fix it. We're just stuck with it. The community does nothing. It fights for nothing as a community, as people, as producers. We ought to have a common interest and sort of demanding some sort of producer's rights. We ought to have some sort of union of YouTube content producers where we demand something back from the game. And apparently if they've bribed everybody out of that kind of activism, uh, you know, the, the money keeps them quiet. Um... It's just, you know, it's really kind of pitiful. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of sad that, uh, you know, there isn't more, there isn't more. There isn't some way to really stop it. I mean, you know, the, the Fred had a lot of videos taken down. And, uh, you know, at Vimeo even, I mean, all these companies do this shit. You really don't have any free speech on the internet unless you can afford not only to create your own web space, but on top of that, you have to expend the energy or money to uh, 
make it visible on Google. And you have to basically scam the system um, to create a visibility in the indexes. The indexes are run by this popularity engine who YouTube says is popular. I mean, I really noticed that the other day. Just was, there was one video that YouTube just kept shoving in my face. And I finally clicked on it. But they, they shoved it in my face so many times. It was like wherever I went, there it was, the link to that video. It's almost every search for like three weeks. And I finally gave in. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a, not a good system for, uh, um, you know, it's not in the interest of, uh, you know, any kind of fairness. It's, uh, it's a bad democracy, a bad, uh, system of, uh, privilege, uh, bestowing of, uh, it's not an earned kind of mechanism, a lot of, um, advantages to, um, cheating and greasing and uh, a lot of inconsistency in treatment. And everybody should find that obnoxious. And <laughs> there should be some mechanism where we can successfully fight against that. But now all that happens is a few people say, ain't it awful? Everybody else says nothing and does nothing. And uh, we're just stuck with it. We just have to take it up the ass again and again. And uh, we've got to got to find a medium, a mechanism, a method of organization uh, where we don't, you know, where we can fight for a common cause without having anything else in common with the cause. Uh, so our hate for each other <laughs> doesn't get in the way of doing the right thing together. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so hard to, you know, when there's all this snow, it really <laughs> makes navigating all this, these splintered trees difficult. Um, frozen beer bottle. What the hell a beer bottle in the middle of nowhere? Jeez. People suck. Um, I mean, really, nobody could have been... <laughs> you know, nobody was doing anything good back here. Uh, waiting for this crap to fall on me. Um, yeah, that's enough. Just whatever, just kind of lamenting how uh, failed this system really is. You know, people really can get into your face uh, for no good reason. Uh, yeah. Really, for no good reason. And they, get, they can do it for free. If you're a scummy little anonymous commenter, uh, you can cause all kinds of trouble. And uh, if you're a video producer, uh, all you can do is get in all kinds of trouble for nothing. It's all high risk and very low reward. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's probably enough. I don't need anything else. Yeah. Anyway, lament, lament. <laughs> yeah, I gotta do something. I'll do something. We'll see what I do. We'll see. There's always stuff going on in there. But, uh, I don't have any. I need some. I need some of those, like, uh, what do you call those elves or something? <laughs> yeah, I need a whole bunch of them. I need a bunch of minions. I need a cult. You know, where the membership actually does something constructive. Uh, but anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just so. I just. So discouraging in terms of the infrastructure is shit. You know, can't get anywhere doing anything. And then on top of that, all these assholes are just so 
abysmal to have to keep arguing from underneath all these accusations of all this preposterous nonsense. Why should I have to defend myself against the accusation that I'm manipulating depressed people to serve some sort of personal ego shit? I mean, it's just... It's an insane accusation. I am a professional depressed person. <laughs> I mean, there's no manipulation. I am I'm, I am the king of the depressed. I'm, it's an honest title. Really, I've sort of earned it. <laughs> I mean, I really... I haven't spent a day on this planet not thinking this planet sucks. I really haven't. I've always known it. That there's just, it's just full of fucking molten shit. <laughs> you know, it is shit. <sighs> oh, anyway. I mean, why should I have to defend against these accusations? <sighs> I'm taking advantage of depressed people. What a fucking joke. <sighs> I mean, you know, what, what that slimy moon maneuver it is, even on the face of it. You know, like somehow you can't honestly express what you honestly believe without having to defend it against this fucking nothing, this evidence, non-evidence-based accusation that you don't really believe it, that it's not really the strongest passion uh, of your entire character and identity. No, it's some sort of other thing. You're really just looking for something else. No, I'm not looking for something else. There's just no evidence I'm looking for something else. You don't spend your life fighting these battles in, you know, with the crickets. I mean, most of my life I didn't have an audience and I was still complaining. It's not about the fucking audience. It's about the goddamn complaint. You fucking cunt. This is such a slimy accusation. And this is coming from these assholes who are self-professed, uh, just doing it for the fun of it. They're just here to entertain themselves. And yet they're making these accusations. I mean, it's just, it's just dismal. It's fucking dismal. Yeah. And such. Damn it. So, until next time. I <laughs> am so tired of it all. So, so tired. Oh, there's so much to do here. I'm just not doing it. Anyway, till next time.